Hello, this is Krogram Dabar 2, and this is my second attempt on this Let's Play. Yeah, because uh, first time I tried this alternative story, um, in the middle of the game it crashed and I lost the old recording. So, yeah, hopefully this time it won't crash. So, yeah, let's play. Delete. So, new game, play. So this is going to be completely different from the stay using stunner. Again, going to be completely different from the <coughs> previous let's play I did. Let's see again this. Okay, just checking this. Yeah, let's do another try this. Well, I reckon you didn't do it then. You know what they say about reckon? I don't, but I reckon it's a lot like assuming. Yeah, something like that. You know, I've driven a bunch of fellas down to this prison. Lord knows how many. Usually it's about now I get the, I didn't do it. Not for me. Because guys in your position already said it enough. I followed your case a little bit. You being a making boy and all. You've got an opinion then? Wouldn't say that. I go in for that innocent till proven guilty thing, even considering who they say you kill. Oh, wait, I think I already said that option. Any of that seem important to you? All of it, but that box never shuts up. Sit in this seat and pay too much attention and you'll drive yourself crazy. I got a nephew up at UGA. You teach there long? Going on my sixth year. You meet your wife in Athens? You want to know how I see it? I got much choice? Sure don't. Regardless, could be you just married the wrong woman. He doesn't say anything either way. Oh. <laughs> You'll have to learn to stop worrying about things you can't control. I'm driving this man once. He, he was the worst one. He wouldn't stop going on about how he didn't do it. He was an older fella, big soft eyes behind a pair of smart folk glasses. And he just wailing back there. Says it wasn't him. Crying and snotting all over, right where you're sitting. All officers are available for him coming to one. Then before long, he starts kicking the back of the seat like like a fussy baby on an airplane. And I tell him he's got to stop. But that's government property, and I'll be forced to zap him otherwise. 
So he stops, and having exhausted all his options, he starts crying out for his mama. Mama, it's all a big mistake. It wasn't me. Maybe he was innocent. Innocent? They caught the fucker red-handed, stabbing his wife, cutting her up as the boys came through the door. He sits in my car screaming bloody murder that it wasn't him. I think he actually believed it himself. It goes to show, people up and go mad when they believe their life is over. I got another good one for you. This one's a little bit less depressing and a bit more hilarious if I do say so. Oh, shit! This other time... <laughs> That always looks painful. Wakey, wakey. Oh, shit. Thirsty. Ah, fuck. My leg. Let's break out the menu, see. Get to that officer. Now let's try that fall. We have fetish on falling, dude. Why don't you just take the keys and move away from his body? I mean, if I was scared like you here, I would just take the keys and move out of the way and then, you know, unlock myself. Shell again. Reload. God damn it. Headshot. First time. Help! Go get someone! There's been a shooting! Wow. 
on. Okay, what well, seriously? What the hell is with your tripping fetish? I mean, he falls more than than anything. Just open the doors. Hello, anybody home? I need a little help. I'm just going to like spin on this more thing. You can Coming see my. In. Don't shoot, okay? An intruder, or one of them. These people might need more help than I do. Let's get the answer for three new messages. Message one left at 5:43 p.m. Hey, Sandra, this is Diana. We're still in Savannah. Uh, Ed had a little incident with some crazy guy near the hotel, so we had to get him back to the ER and have it checked out. Anyway, he's not feeling well enough to drive back tonight, so we're staying an extra day. Thanks so much for looking after Clementine, and I promise we'll be back in time before the spring break. Message 2. Left at 11.19 p.m. Oh my god, finally. I don't know if you tried to reach us. All, all the calls are getting dropped. They're not letting us leave and aren't telling us anything about Atlanta. Please, please, just leave the city and take Clementine with you back to Marietta. I, I've got to get back to the hospital. Please let me know that you're safe. Message 3, left at 6.51 a.m. Clementine, baby. If you can hear this, call the police. Nine one one. We love you. We love you. We love you. Daddy? Huh? That would be the job. What's your name? I'm Clementine. This is my house. Hi, Clementine. I'm Lee. How old are you? Eight. And you're all alone? Yes. I don't know where anybody is. How old are you? I'm, uh, 37. Okay. Where are your parents? They took a trip and left me with Sandra. 
They're in Savannah, I think. Where the boats are? Are you safe? Shit. I'm outside in my treehouse. They can't get in. That's smart. See? Can you see me? I can see you through the window. Epic. Uh, never mind. That doesn't make much difference. <laughs> Oh, shit. Did you kill it? I don't know. I think so. Sometimes they come back. Have you killed one? No, but they get shot a lot. You've been all by yourself through this? Yeah, I want my parents to come home now. I think that might be a little while, you know? Oh. Look, I don't know what happened, but I'll look after you until then. What should we do now? It's going in the dark. We need to get out of this neighborhood. It's not safe. We're less likely to be seen if we move at night. My parents might come home. We won't go far. We'll try to find shelter and come back here with others. That sounds good. But we can hide in my treehouse until then. It'll be a tough climb with this leg, but that's a good idea. Let's go. Stay close to me. <laughs> 